doing it because he wants to be a saint. And <laughs> been serving others struggling with addiction and homelessness in our community for over 25 years. Wow. Um, first off, uh, all glory goes to God. Um, if there was ever a story of, of redemption and transformation, that's me. Uh, 32 years ago, cocaine addict, drug addict on the streets of San Diego. Um, transformed by the power of Jesus Christ to who I am today, River Brown, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like St. Brown a little better. <laughs> uh, so I also want to thank my wife, Jackie. Uh, thank you. Can't, no one does this alone, and certainly um, these awards are wonderful to get. But if it really wasn't for a dedicated staff of people at East County Transitional Living Center, uh, East County Transitional Living Center wouldn't be what it is today. So, staff, would you please stand up and be recognized? They, like me, have dedicated their lives. Uh, seeing other lives transformed. I think the, the, the youngest staff member we have is working on her eighth or sixth year, I do believe, and, and Robert and I have been doing this together for 20 years. And so, you know, we do this because we're called to do this. We don't do this because we get paid to do this. In fact, we did it for free for a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. and we got a little bit of money, but not much. But that's okay, because we don't do it for that. I wanted to share with you why why I do what, we do, what I do, um, besides the, the fact that, that God just transformed my life in such a way, and I love to see other people get that same blessing. One day, back in 1991, uh, the chairman of the board of the San Diego Rescue Mission asked me to jump in the car with him and take a ride because uh, he wanted to show me something. And that's when the rescue mission was on, uh, down on 12th and, and J. And we got in the car and drove down, down J. And we came to the four-way stop right at 16th and J. Uh, Sister Winnie has got extended again across the street. Four-way stop sign. Homeless everywhere. And, and, and that hasn't changed much. Uh, but we sat there, and we sat there, and I looked, and there was no cars anywhere. There wasn't a car behind us. There wasn't a car on the right of us, left of us, or in front of us. And I looked over, and Dave, uh, bless his heart, St. David, the first one. He, he has tears coming down his eyes. And he's just, he's literally, at this point, starting to, to have a real hard time. And, and, and I said, Dave, what is going on with you? And he says, look at her. Just look at her. And tears are coming down. He seems emotional. And I look around, and I, I see over on the corner where he's I'm trying to figure out where he's looking. And he's looking over in the corner, and a prostitute is there. Oh. And she's in full, or less than full, really. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, he says, look at her. And I said, Dave, are you talking about the prostitute? And he goes, no. I'm talking about a baby that was in a mother's arms that had such dreams for her. Oh. Dreams to have such a full life, and look what life has done to her. He says, I want to take you down to a place and show you what we're going to do to help her get her dreams back. And from that moment on, I didn't look at homeless people, even though I was homeless myself at one time, I didn't look at them in the same way anymore. I looked at them as people who have lost their dreams. Their families had dreams for them. They, they, they had <coughs> hopes and aspirations for them to do things, and yet life hit them in the face somehow. They became addicted, some of them, some, some just running away, a lot of them run away from knucklehead guys. And, and we went down the street and he showed me these five warehouses that we converted into the Rachel Grover Home for Women and Children. And over the years, I learned a lot of things uh, from Dave. And even on his deathbed, um, I went to visit him about six or seven hours before he died. And he laid his hands on me and prayed that his mantle would come on me. And it was no longer about six months later that we found the uh, Fabulous Seven Motel and began work to transform that into 
uh, the amazing ministry that it is. And so, many of you might not believe that there's a God, I don't know. Uh, but I can tell you I'm proof that there's one. Because there's no way I'd be standing in front of you today being called St. Harold. <laughs> you don't know who I was before. Um, but God's transforming power can do that to anyone. I've seen him take people that were just literally schizophrenic, bipolar, screaming at the moon, hadn't had showers in, in years, be transformed in a matter of months because of the power of God's work. And to get this message out to, to, to others, that, that, you know, to government and to everyone else, that uh, it's okay to support works that actually use the Word of God in order to help people. I hope we can do that. I, I hope we can actually stand on the same grounds that uh, the faith-based initiative said we were supposed to be able to stand on. It hasn't got there yet, but we'll see. Um, but we do everything we do without government money anyway. Um, maybe we should never take it because I think the tax dollars should be used to do other things than, than what we do. Um, what we do is, is, is really transformational. Um, thank you so much for this great honor. Um, I have to also mention that I am a fellow Rotarian. Yay! I am also a Lions Pathfinder. Um, I, I, I ran into the Lions Club uh, Pathfinders, and they're a group of Filipinos um, that started a little Lions Club. And one of the first churches I went to uh, was, was in a district down in National City that had gone to a Filipino uh, heritage down there. And the Filipino people are so wonderful. And I love Lumpia. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm proud to kind of be able to bridge the gap between the, the Lions and the Rotary. I don't know if that's acceptable or not. But I will challenge both next year at the 5K run. Uh, we beat you this year, Lions. So you're going to have to do a little better at our 5K run and draw some more support. Uh, so thank you so much for these great honors and this great award. Uh, I just I don't want to take up any more time because you know it's dangerous if you give a, a pastor a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <God. laughs>